Welcome back to the channel guys. This video is an update on what's been going on with Hylion stock. The CEO Thomas Healy was with Yahoo Finance earlier today and he basically was talking about where the company is and all the things that they've uh, achieved recently and what they're looking to achieve. So I just wanted to share the clip with you guys and it's really good to know that the CEO is going out to big platforms like this and talking about uh, what the company is doing because it just shows that the company is on track to deliver according to plan, which is a good thing. So I'm going to play you the clip and at the end of that clip, which is about six minutes, I think I'm going to give you my take on it. Trade uh, and you've made some progress here. The formation of this council seems interesting. Talk about what you're trying to do with that to really learn from your customers what they're looking for now. I appreciate you having me back on again. And, you know, last week we announced uh, the formation of this, this group of fleets, you know, you mentioned a couple of them. We also have fleets like Ryder and Penske and Schneider uh, in this mix as well here. And really our goal is to pull together some of the leaders in this industry who, uh, who operate a bunch of vehicles who are really driving the shift towards electrification and pull them in to actually start working with us early here in the development of our technology. So that as we go and roll it out with these, uh, with these, fleets, we know that our solution is going to be the right fit. You know, we're, we're bringing forward electrified products to this market, but we're doing it in a unique way where we actually produce the electricity on the vehicle as opposed to needing to use the grid. And so, you know, it's, it's really offering a fleet the best of electrification, but not the downsides of range anxiety and high charging costs. And so, uh, you know, we're really thrilled to be working with these fleets to make sure we offer them the best solution out there. Yeah, it seems like the market right now is trying to digest which is the best solution, right? Because to your point, we've talked a lot about maybe going full electric and maybe the, some of the concerns that some of those customers out there might have when it comes to trucking. Uh, but Highland shares down uh, about 60% since you completed that process in the SPAC merger back in October. I wonder right now uh, what you need to show to kind of, uh, I guess, manifest that growth or prove to investors that you're on the direction to hit the forecast you laid out when you completed that SPAC merger, because uh, is it going to be selling these trucks or, or getting a big name partner to sign on a certain amount of their fleets? What do you think it is that's going to need to really convince the market that going with the, with the natural gas kind of machine on board these trucks is the right way to go? Yeah, so I think there's a, a couple of things here. I mean, one is, you know, continue to showing uh, milestones like what we did this the couple of days ago of announcing these fleets that we're working with. You know, for us, we're in a little bit of a unique situation where we actually already have a product out on the road, our hybrid electric solution. Uh, that puts us ahead of, you know, some of the other companies in this space in terms of getting electric products out there. And then, uh, you know, we also need to, to continue to, um, you know, show milestones of getting more hyper trucks, doing demo trucks later uh, this year with fleets, and then going into next year, really ramping up volume. So, you know, we're on track to being able to, to achieve all those. And I think that's what's ultimately going to grow the long term value in our organization. You talked about um, producing electricity in the vehicle. I wonder if you can talk a little more about the mechanics of all of this and why specifically you're not going all in on EVs, but taking this route. Yeah, so the, the trucking space is very different than passenger car, right? You think about, you know, passenger cars, you're going to drive 30 miles a day or so. With trucking, some of these fleets are operating at five, 600 miles a day. And so when you think about trying to store all that electricity in a battery pack on the vehicle, the size of the battery, the weight of that battery, it becomes unrealistic. And so that's where we're taking approach for, for that long haul market where we can actually use natural gas today on that vehicle to produce electricity um, to charge the batteries. And we can actually do that for cheaper and do it greener uh, than you can buy electricity off of the grid. And then we even laid out a roadmap where in the future, we can actually use hydrogen to recharge that battery pack as well. And so you know, we see this as, as the logical uh, approach for that long haul market. Once again, very different than passenger cars and what we're seeing happening there though. Yeah, having said that, it does feel like ultimately in the long run, we are going in towards an all EV direction. Um, how far out do you think we're from that? Because it sounds like you're taking more of a realistic approach out of necessity, but it feels like the long term outlook doesn't include natural gas. 
Yeah, I think, uh, you know, for us, we see electrification is really at the start in the trucking industry. I mean, over 90% of the vehicles out there, probably close to 99% of the vehicles uh, are running off of diesel fuel. And so this shift towards electrification, no doubt it's happening, but it is going to take some time here. And we see that, you know, as you look at going to a hydrogen based future, there are some big milestones that still need to happen, like building out infrastructure and also reducing the cost of hydrogen. I mean, hydrogen is uh, is like five times the cost of diesel fuel today. So there's a lot of cost decrease that need to happen in order to make that a practical solution in the future. Versus where we sit today is natural gas is about half or a third the cost of what diesel fuel is. And so that's where we see there's a, uh, a great uh, ability here to really get into the market using natural gas to charge the batteries. And then over time, as, uh, as hydrogen evolves, we can make that step into hydrogen. But to try to force that today, it's not a practical solution for fleets. You guys reported earnings in February. You noted seven hybrid electric units uh, in the fourth quarter and 20 hybrid electric units for the full year uh, 2020. I mean, when you're looking at these milestones as you uh, describe them, uh, what's that going to look like for 2021 and, and maybe building out uh, some of those deliverables? So this year, we're going to continue to ramp up uh, the amount of hybrid systems we're getting out on the road. And um, and then for us, we're also going to start shipping uh, some early demo units of that hyper truck powertrain. And then going into next year in 22 is when we're going to start ramping up uh, the amount of units of the hyper truck that we're going to be able to deliver. So, you know, for us, for the, the audience here, I think, you know, keep looking for when we're, you know, getting units out into fleet's hands, making announcements with working with these partner fleets like we did a, a week ago. And uh, um, and just continue to see that traction of getting units out in the field, because ultimately that's that's the su success of the organization is actually getting these units in fleet's hands to let them experience it in their own operations and with the goal of reducing costs and reducing emissions at the same time. Hi, Leon, founder and CEO Thomas Healy. It's good to talk to you today. We'd love to have you back on the show as we track the progress of the company. So that is the CEO giving his updates. Now, for me, let, let me give you my take on, on this whole Hylion. I'm still very bullish on Hylion, by the way, long term. But I learned a very important lesson with my involvement with, with Hylion. Remember, Hylion and Jivo are my first ever long term investment. I've never placed a trade for long term. It's always been short term trades, always been day trades since I started in 2018, three years ago, right? Now, these are my first long-term investments. Jivo has done particularly well. I'm up 700%. This one down 50%. So net, I'm up, right? But the lesson that I learned from Hylion is buy slowly. So especially with a, a pre-revenue company like Hylion, right? 2020, revenue of 1 million. 2021, revenue 8, 8 million. 2022 is when they really start to ramp up the revenue, right? So with a pre-revenue company like this, buy slowly and buy those deep red days. Those days when the market is red, when the company is down, the stock is down 10% or more, those are the days you buy. I was doing the opposite. I was buying the pops. Every day it went up, I, I would think I'm missing the boat and I would add to the position. If I was doing the opposite, my average would, would have been a lot lower, but also I wouldn't be tying money down, which is very important, especially for someone like me who is a trader. I don't want to tie money down. So um, those are the two lessons I learned with this um, highly on position as a whole, and it's going to serve me well for my future um, long term trades. It's the same thing that applies to short short term trades, by the way, buy the dips, sell the rips. So going forward, when I'm going to buy into positions and stocks like this, you can apply the same principles as well. I would start with 10%, right? So if I wanted to buy, if my intended size, full size was um, 1,000 shares, I would start with 100, buying the deep red days, buying into those deep red days. It makes such a big, big difference. That's it from me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to keep seeing these videos. Um, that's it, and I'll see you guys at the next video. Peace.